From a strictly theological point of view, few things are more challenging than striking the right balance when thinking about ordained priesthood. Most of what the New Testament says about priests applies to all Christians, and it is difficult to avoid being conditioned by unconscious, romanticized visions of priesthood. One thing is certain. In one form or another, alternatively idealized or vilified, ordained priesthood has been there since the beginning of Christianity and throughout its history. Even just from the historical viewpoint, it is clear that it is an essential dimension of Christianity. In his classical and inspiring presentation of ordained priesthood, the former Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael Ramsey, describes priests as the people of the Gospel, of the Eucharist, of reconciliation and of prayer. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, even to the end of the age. First, priests are ministers of the Gospel, teachers and preachers, and as such dedicated students of theology. Their studies need not be vast in extent, but will be deep in their integrity, not in order that priests may be erudite, but in order that they may be simple. It is those whose studies are shallow who are confused and confusing. In this way, they will help all Christians to be better witnesses. It will be a partnership, as the priests will learn from the laity much about the contemporary world and about the meaning of the divine truth in its human context. When the hour had come, Jesus reclined at the table with his apostles, and he took the bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So too priests are the people of the Eucharist. The liturgy indeed belongs to all the people. Why then the priests? As celebrants, they are more than the people's representatives. In taking, breaking and consecrating, they act in Christ's name and in the name not only of the particular congregation, but of the whole Catholic Church down the ages. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's trespasses against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. God made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Priests and ministers of reconciliation. The priest today is only one among many skills and agencies designed to help people in their troubles. The therapist, the doctor, the welfare officer, the marriage counsellor and many kinds of social workers bring relief to the problems with which people get entangled. The parson's monopoly has long ceased and the confessional no longer stands preeminent as the seat of counsel and direction.
Yet, amidst all the various activities for the putting right of human ills, there is so often a whole dimension missing, the dimension of sin and forgiveness, which the priest keeps alive by an office which represents the forgiving Church and the forgiving Lord Jesus Christ in confession and absolution and by preaching the gospel of God's reconciliation. Then, in the Church and for the Church, priests are people of prayer. Do not all Christians pray? They do indeed, and from many of them, we priests can learn to pray and to pray better. As teachers of theology, priests must pray, as theology which is alive includes not only book work, but the authentic knowledge of God which comes through prayer alone. So too, as ministers of reconciliation, priests will pray, for they are one with those who are sinful in the bitter estrangement of their sin and in the hopeful grief of their penitence. And at the same time, they are one with Christ in his sorrow for sinners and his joy at sin's conquest. One final note from Michael Ramsey that captures the priesthood as a whole. In the Church and for the Church, the priest displays, enables, involves. Priests display in their own persons that total response to Christ to which all members of the Church are pledged. They are to be beacons of the Church's pastoral, prophetic and priestly concern. Priests enable the Church's response. By their professional training and concentration of labour, they get things done. Priests involve the whole Church in their own activity. When they visit a sick person, for instance, it is not only the visit of a kind Christian, it is the Church visiting. Similarly, priests can be the Church praying, the Church caring for the distressed, the Church preaching.